Hello, and welcome to the North State Breakdown with Benjamin Nguyen. Today I would like to talk about a public hearing that will be conducted on Tuesday, May 16th. District 4 Supervisor and Board Chair Patrick Jones has requested to change the zoning of a property he owns in Millville from a residential to a commercial recreation for the purpose of opening a gun range. The land in question is property purchased in 2010 by Patrick Jones. The reason I bring this up is because the public hearing is being conducted on behalf of resource management, something the Board of Supervisors has direct purview over. This would put this particular item in direct conflicts of interest for Patrick Jones, seeing as he is the District 4 Supervisor and Board Chair. Here you can see Jones' Statement of Economic Interest form filed in February of 2022. The parcels listed here are the ones in question for the proposed gun range. This particular item on the board agenda brings into focus a long-standing beef that the supervisor has had with the resource management department. What are some of the other departments within the county that you think are in most need of reform? Well, for me personally, I've just had a trouble with, uh, I, um, I've had trouble with the resource management department for a long time, not being friendly and helping people move forward and being successful. Health, that's, like that's building permits. permits and so forth. But a sentiment shared by the much maligned Connecticut billionaire Reverge Anselmo who is known for having a protracted legal battle with the county over building codes for a winery and a chapel, a lawsuit that he ultimately lost. I've spoken about this before, but if you'd like a refresher, please check out the North State Breakdown Episode 6. Reverge not only funded Jones' campaign in 2020 to the tune of $115,000, he also majority funded the Shasta General Purpose Committee and Liberty Committee PACs that led to the recall of Leonard Modi and the two newest board members, Kevin Cry and Chris Kellstrom, being elected. In the second episode of the Red, White, and Blueprint docuseries, Reverge stated that he would come back to Shasta County if the supervisors were recalled and if resource management was removed. Would I come back? Yeah. That's your question, right? Yeah. If, uh, if you're successful with Patrick Jones, recall three supervisors, eliminate the whole resources management division, which has no resources, yeah, if you did that, I'd go back. Earlier this week, Jones released a propaganda video narrated by himself with drone footage of the property. He makes the case for why this project is above board. In the video, he mentions that the Resource Management Department made the recommendation to change the zoning type. The Resource Management Department recommended that a zone change would be the appropriate course of action. So I paid the appropriate fee and then started to work on all the environmental issues that needed to be addressed. He goes on to talk about the various mitigation measures that are being done to minimize sound and light pollution. What Jones fails to mention is that nearly all the related studies, environmental impact study, traffic study, etc., were all performed nearly 10 years ago. In order to properly consider this project, they would need to be redone. There is also the fact that there is public outcry that is currently underway regarding this project. Currently, there is over 750 signatures on change.org, demanding that the gun range not be built in that area. One citizen's email included with the attachments to the proposed zone amendment expressed concerns about people overshooting their targets and potentially firing bullets into adjacent properties, as well as concerns about the efficacy of the noise study, which doesn't take into account large events with overnight camping. The area is currently zoned as limited residential, combined with mobile home and building site. Nearby residents have been voicing their opposition online. One resident is concerned that they purchased the land specifically to start a farm and are concerned how this is going to affect them, stating that the area that the cattle and horses spend time during hot summer days is directly adjacent to the proposed long rifle shot target area. Additionally, there's allegedly a neighbor on the other side of the property who's a veteran with PTSD who has lived there for over 20 years, who will have to move if this project moves forward. Which brings to me the question of ethics. How could a sitting supervisor, the chair no less, bring an item to the board for vote that is overseen by the very agency he is a supervisor for. Jones is no stranger to ethics violations either. On his very first day in office, Patrick Jones and the previous District 5 supervisor, Les Baugh, opened the doors to the public after a majority vote to conduct meetings remotely for public safety due to the pandemic. Additionally, Jones let a for-profit documentary, The Red, White, and Blueprint, into the board chambers after hours to film the removal of a protective plexiglass from the dais a publicity stunt to bolster views in the documentary. This also brings me to the fact that ethics violations were the chief complaint about recalled supervisor Leonard Modi, the subject of the Red, White, and Blueprint documentary, which was majority funded by, you guessed it, Reverge Anselmo. 
there is a good case to be made for Patrick Jones to recuse himself for this vote. California law prohibits public officials from making, participating in, or attempting to use their positions for financial gain that would result in a conflict of interest. They are prohibited from having a financial interest in any decision within their official capacity that could affect their personal economic interests, those of their immediate family, or certain individuals or organizations with whom they have specific relationships. There's also a case to be made for his lifelong friend and District 5 Supervisor Chris Kellstrom to recuse himself as well. Like I say, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. Um, we've got one supervisor up there now that's doing the right thing. Yeah. Um, him and I have gone to school together since second grade, so uh -huh. um, we've been, we've, we know each other. Sure. Patrick Jones' campaign for Chris Kellstrom in 2021 has been involved in numerous fundraising activities, many directly related to political efforts, utilizing donations from his family's gun store, Jones Ford. This could constitute a business relationship between Kellstrom and Jones, something that is prohibited by the Fair Political Practices Commission. In fact, when Kellstrom first announced his run, he stated that Jones would have, quote, help in the boardroom. Think, but uh, anyways, I wasn't prepared at all to uh, come up here, but um, yeah, I've known this guy for quite a while, and uh, all I can tell you is I'm following his lead, so he will have help. If I get on the board, he will have help. Not his district, but his childhood friend, Patrick Jones. There is also a case to be made that District 1 Supervisor Kevin Cry should recuse himself as well. Since he has recently been served with his notice of intent to be recalled, Fundraisers are underway, and the very same group involved in Leonard Modi's recall are involved. It's difficult to see how this could be anything other than a quid pro quo for Cry's vote to move this project along. In fact, the only two board members who do not seem to have any conflicts of interest are District 2 Supervisor Tim Garman and District 3 Supervisor Mary Rickard. And without a quorum of non-conflicted supervisors, it's unclear how this can ethically be voted on by the board as it currently stands. The real question is, what was the reason Patrick Jones was unable to get this project to move forward in the last 13 years? Was it because the general public and resource management was unwilling to approve the zone change? Why then, only after Jones has been in office for two years, is this now on the docket? Is it because of intimidation to leadership to the resource management department? Could it be that jobs are on the line if they don't recommend rezoning? We might not get an answer to that question, but one thing is clear. Resource Management Department is a common target of both Patrick Jones and billionaire Reaver John Salmo. The picture of the last two years of political activity makes their alliance abundantly clear. It is the opinion of the breakdown, as well as many in the community, that this project should not be eligible to move forward until Patrick Jones is out of office to ensure that special interests and intimidation are not influencing the outcome. And that's the breakdown. <laughs> <laughs>